Evening folks, as I'm sure you already know, Martin asked me to do about 20 minutes on image manipulation in post. I can only really help you with Photoshop specifically, although it probably applies to Photoshop elements and to programs like Affinity. I can't say to what extent, but any program that purports to edit images should be able to do this sort of thing. So in that vein, let's explore the Versatile Curves tool and Curves Adjustment layer. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you're already using levels, um, which you find up here, I did a screenshot to make it bigger so it's easier for you to see in Photoshop. It's under the Image menu, Adjustments, Curves. As I say, if you're already using levels, uh, you'll find that curves does everything you can do in levels and a lot more besides. So I'd encourage you to use the curves tool rather than levels. Now on a club outing to the Farn Islands, we stopped at Fountain Abbey. That's up here near Ripon in North Yorkshire. Uh, just to stretch our legs and get a bite to eat. This is Fountains Abbey on a good day, um, but unfortunately for us uh, the weather wasn't great uh, and in fact there was a torrential downpour whilst we were ensconced in the National Trust restaurant. Fortunately the rain desisted for us to walk around the abbey, but as you can see the skies were quite leaden. If I open this image this is an image I took on that day. Um, can't really say, say why I took it apart from the fact that we were up there, we'd gone a long way with cameras, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. Anyway, um, if we go up into image adjust curves, I'm sure that uh, in previous talks I've mentioned the auto option in the curves box and if we look at the options you'll see that in the as the default I've got find light and dark colours checked and also snap neutral midtones um, and that already gives us um, adjustment to the RGB channels um, and if I just pop back one uh, to show you what's happened. You can see that it's already made, started to make reasonable adjustments to the image. Let's open the another adjustment, curves adjustment layer. This time I want to go up into the preset box, boxes, options, and I want to increase the contrast. So there's a few choices, but we'll go straight for strong contrast. You can see what it's done to the tone curve. Uh, we click OK, but not only has it uh, increased the um, contrast, it's given quite a boost to the saturation, particularly in these greens. If I pop back one and go forward, you can see exactly what I mean. Now the problem here with the, with the Curves tool is that that's baked into this base layer, so there's, you haven't got a lot of options left. Uh, so rather than adjust using the Curves tool, we'll go into the Curves Adjustment layer and do it. Now you've got a couple of options. Uh, at the bottom of the Layers panel, you've got this icon here that looks like an eclipsed moon or something. And if you look up here, similar to the drop-down menu from the um, Image Adjustment layers, you've got Levels and Curves in there. Or if you happen to have the adjustment panel as part of your setup, uh, you've got curves in there. So you can click either one of those and you'll, it'll add a curves adjustment layer complete uh, with a layer mask. They were masked in white so it's not affecting anything at the moment. We've got the um, properties panel up here. Uh, again, if we go into the preset box, we can go straight to strong contrast 
and you can see it gives us exactly the same result as the curves tool but now we've got the option uh, to change things and the first thing we need to do is click on the layer blending mode and choose luminosity. Now once more you can see that by choosing luminosity we're only affecting the luminance values of the pixels rather than affecting the colour. If we click on the history and just back up you can see that it's uh, just by changing the luminosity in blending mode it's made a big difference. Okay well we're not entirely finished there's other things you can do here first of all there's the opacity you can drop the opacity right down and play with it until you get it uh, where you want it to be um, that's up to you um, you've also got the option of using the um, layer mask uh, if you select a soft brush and a reduced uh, opacity or a reduced flow whichever suits you uh, you can just paint on the really dark areas to bring them back a bit um, like so and you could you know do quite a few things or please yourself so that's the first step uh, and I think you can see it's made quite a difference to the image if I hold the alt button down whilst I click on this icon next to the base layer you can see where we started uh, and click again to see where we finished so that's a fairly fairly simple adjustment that don't take very long at all and we'll close that down okay well this seems like a, a good point to pause for questions should anybody have them if not we'll carry on with this image of the lovely Emma who kindly posed for this uh, but again a little bit flat uh, so I could have done better with the lighting so let's repeat our previous steps we'll go for a curves adjustment layer and we'll go straight for a strong contrast and in this case the oversaturation in the reds is very obvious so we'll pop down to the blending modes and choose luminosity uh, which is uh, or has dealt with a saturation problem now at this point we could of course play with the tone curve um, we could change the opacity um, or we could paint on the mask on the adjustment layer to hide any areas of the adjustment that we didn't want to show like on the on the light of tones on the face and here but in this case um, what I'd like to do is to is to have a more targeted adjustment on the darker tones now harking back to our previous discussions on luminosity masking which I'm sure you remember well I did suggest that it might be an idea to make up a set of actions that you could easily recall hopefully you all did that because that's where we're going now I want a mask that targets the dark tones for adjustment whilst leaving the lighter tones alone so what I need to do is call up the action for a darks mask which will do exactly that now you would have if you did the reproduce the actions you would have several actions available uh, this is um, one that targets a very small part of the tones uh, a darks mask 5 that's a 4 uh, which is targeting more of the dark tones uh, and that's a 3 you can see where the darks because we're on the layer mask where it's moving along and uh, darks mask 2 gives us even more uh, and even more on the first so really it's just a question of deciding which one uh, we would like to stick with I think for the purpose of this we can go for a darks 3 mask 
and if we look at the dark the mask itself if I hold the alt key down on the keyboard and click on the mask you can see um, which parts have been targeted you all know the mantra white reveals and black conceals well at least it does on a layer mask so on this layer mask where it's black that's uh, what's being concealed which is the lighter tones in the skin and what's being revealed is any areas where the tones were darkest so go and click and open it back up again and if we just looked you can see the adjustment it's quite subtle uh, but I think it makes quite a big difference to the to the overall look of the image um, I'd do quite a bit more to it to be honest but that deals with the uh, curves adjustment layer uh, we could just drag in a, uh, a background just to take things off this is a just a picture of a piece of paper I, I've used it previously and I coloured it slightly brown we wouldn't want that uh, but we can drag that uh, into into this this one and if we hold the shift key down it'll centre the the image uh, we'll just drop that down to the bottom of the map now I'm not keen on the colour so let's just go into the adjustment layer we'll choose uh, hue saturation and if we drag the slider down so that we get a purplish cast on it uh, just to complement the dress I think that would do you could of course lighten it or darken it uh, to taste I think I would probably I would probably go about there on this one uh, and really that's it I did I, I suppose I did omit to mention that as we've discussed before with a luminosity mask the gradation between the different tones because it's based on luminosities is very gradual and it really does feather from one tone to the next very well so that it's really practically undetectable well I think it's totally undetectable on the on the image so there we go another one bites the dust as it were nope nope so again I, I think we're at a point where we can stop for questions or pause for questions should you have any okay moving along because we've talked about using a, a blend mode uh, on the adjustment layer I just want to talk about a more normal application of a blend mode on an ordinary image. We'll, we can use Emma again. Now I'm sure some of you have already used this, this mode. Um, it makes everything darker so it's great for darkening images or darkening shadows. Great for manipulating uh, skies. So as I say I'd be surprised if you're not using it. Now in order to blend something and I'm sure this is the way you've been taught if, you, if you've done it before is that you've got a base layer here and you duplicate it uh, for a blend layer and if we click on the multiply blend mode uh, you can see that's made an adjustment. Now what's happening here is that the luminosities of the blend layer Oh, sorry the luminosity of each pixel in the blend layer is added to the luminosity of the corresponding pixel in the base layer so naturally that's going to result in a darker color uh, unless of course the color is white because white added to white is white same with black black added to black is black okay um, what we can do um, let's just uh, let me just back up and show that if I drag that blank layer to the top so we've now got a white layer 
covering up the base layer. If I make this white layer and click multiply, you can see that absolutely nothing's happened. Well, it's made the transparent pixels white, but apart from that, it's had no effect. Because, of course, we're adding white to white or white to a colour and it's no change. Similarly, if I were to change that uh, colour of the mask to black, then everything is black because black added to whatever you've got ends up with black. If I were to select the marquee tool and fill that with white, as you can see we've got a white stripe, then what's below is revealed uh, and the black is concealing it. It's just like a mask really. And similarly if I were to change that to a mid grey and fill the marquee with mid grey you can see that the white has become the same grey as we've chosen and all the other pixels have been become darker by the amount of the grey that we've added or rather the amount of the luminosity of the grey that we've added. Okay let's go back to square one. Um, I said that the way you'll have been taught I imagine is to duplicate the base layer um, and then make a, a blending layer. Now the only thing uh, about that is it's fairly an elegant way of going about things because by duplicating the layer you've immediately doubled the size of the image which is fine if you've got a stonking great computer but if you're a bit short of memory or you're a bit short of storage space that's not ideal. So instead of duplicating the layer and doubling the size of the image Let's go in and create a Curves Adjustment layer. Now, it sounds a bit daft, but if we, if we now change the blend mode of that to Multiply, we get exactly the same result, uh, but the file size remains at 41.5 meg. Um, it's no different. Uh, and if that sounds counterintuitive, Photoshop is simply recording the luminosities of the pixels, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what level of luminosity it is, it takes up the same amount of space on the computer. So change the colours by just adding the multiply mode makes absolutely no difference to the, the size of the image. You can obviously fiddle with the curves layer to make more adjustments as you as you wish. I mean, it's it's quite effective, um, and of course you've got the luminosity mask and so on. Um, but again, um, uh, I would I would prefer to use a luminosity mask uh, to deal with it. Um, so if we go straight to a, a luminosity mask, uh, that's a light luminosity mask, which you can see is really not what we want. We can go lighter and lighter. Um, and what we're doing, of course, is letting the lights through. If we go for a darks mask, uh, that's a grade five, grade four, grade three, and so on. So you can see we're getting a similar result to what we had before, but this time using the multiply blend mode uh, on this mask. Um, so that's another way uh, of doing things and very often it's, um, it's better. I mean you have to make a decision which way you go. One way ends up with a fairly similar uh, result, uh, but in this case you are applying it to every pixel on the image rather than just a partial application. Okay, well I think we're done for that one, so uh, nope. So again, I guess it's question time. <laughs>